Good evening. Good evening. Thank you for joining tonight. Pray that you all having a great day. The weather's nice outside. God is good. He graced us with another opportunity to have a sunny and a warm day here in Wisconsin. I don't know about you, but I'm excited, excited about what God is doing in our lives. We're, we're living in a season where the presence of the Lord needs to take precedence in our lives no matter what the enemy brings against us we are more than able to overpower and overcome him 
through the word of God as we trust in our Savior's strength and his ability. Tonight we're going to go into chapter 8 in our book, the, strong, uh, the Battlefield of the Mind, the Battlefield of the Mind, what we've been discussing. We left off last time with mind-binding spirits, how the enemy uses many different tactics to overpower our thought life, to keep us vulnerable in a place of defeat. But the Lord is good and his mercy truly endures forever. Amen, amen. Let's go into a word of prayer. Gracious God, our Father, I thank you for this day that you have created. I thank you, Lord God, for your goodness and mercy bestowed upon us. We thank you, Lord God, that you gave given us another opportunity, oh God, to study your word tonight. I pray, Lord God, that you will speak to our hearts by divine revelation to strengthen, to empower, to encourage us to keep moving forward by faith. So many times, God, we get caught up in the things of life and we neglect to worship or give you praise. But Lord, I thank you that you causing us to have a spiritual awakening that our hearts will be in tune to your voice, oh God, to hear you speaking to us by divine revelation, by the unction of the Holy Spirit, wooing us to come into your presence, to seek your face while you're able to be found, to bow down our hearts before you and yield ourselves as living sacrifices. I ask you, Father, tonight to forgive us for our sins, knowingly and unknowingly, wash us in the blood of the Lamb. Father God, I thank you for bringing us through this day to this very hour. Help us to remove the business of the day from our minds, O oh God, that we may focus on your word, to hear you speak into our hearts, to inspire us, to edify us, to build us up in our faith, to grow in grace and the knowledge of who you are. And I thank you, Lord God, that you're faithful to do what you promised to do in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you, Cousin Sandra. Good to see you on tonight. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God is so good. Amen. You know, uh, we've been dealing with the battlefield of the mind for quite some time now. And every day, we're in a spiritual battle. And we must get to the place where we arm ourselves to stand against the schemes of the enemy because he's definitely going to attack you from the moment you wake up in the morning. He's looking for devices, devices and ways to trip you, to trip you up and cause you to fall back into the place of despair, fear, and defeat. But I want you to be encouraged tonight and know that the Lord is on your side and he's greater than the enemy who comes against you. No weapon formed against you is going to prosper when you put your confidence, your dependency, your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, because greater is he, the word tells us, that's in us than he that's in the world. And when you know that he's living on the inside of you, it doesn't matter what the enemy brings your way, you can overpower him, you can overcome him because of the word of God and the power of the Holy Spirit working in our lives to give us the strength to endure and to overcome every obstacle, trial, and test. I missed a few weeks because I was dealing with laryngitis, but I thank God he's still healing my voice. He's given me the opportunity to come on tonight to study the word of God with you and to help you uh, get into the word, to begin to see and examine your mind, to see where in your mind are you allowing yourself to be entrapped by the enemy. And I know that when we get into the word of God, God's word will take precedence over the power of the enemy in our lives. We learn how to yield, surrender, and release ourselves into his hands. The most important thing as a believer we can do is learn how to put first the Lord, to seek his face, to continually allow him to have dominion and authority over our mindsets. And it's going to take us getting to the place of casting down every imagination and every high thought that exalt itself against the knowledge of God. So our scripture tonight, it says in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17 and 18, the subject for tonight in the book is when, when is my mind normal? When is my mind normal? In the book, it says, for I always pray to the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
the Father of glory, that he may grant you a spirit of wisdom and revelation of insight into the mysteries and secrets in the deep and intimate knowledge of him by having the eyes of our hearts flooded with light so that you can know and understand the hope to which he has called you and how rich is the, his glorious inheritance in the saints, his set apart ones. And that's the amplified version. In the King James Version, it puts it like this, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, that the eyes of your understanding be enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and what is exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe according to this working mighty power. Amen. Amen. Notice that Paul prays that you and I will gain wisdom by having the eyes of our hearts enlightened. Based on several things I have studied, this is our author uh, giving a commentary, I describe the eyes of the heart as the mind. And that is truly what it is. The eyes of our heart is defined as the mind or the conscious or the soul, the soulless realm where the Holy Spirit enters into our consciousness to give us revelation and lead us in the way of truth and righteousness. As Christians, in what condition should our minds be? In other words, what, what should be the normal state of the mind of a believer? In order to answer that question, we must look at the different functions of the mind and the spirit. According to the word of God, the mind and the spirit works together. That is what is what I call the principles of mind aiding the spirit. The mind aiding the spirit. To better understand this principle, let's see how it works in the life of a believer. The mind-spirit principle. We talked about mind binding spirits before. Now we're talking about the mind-spirit aid. So how the Holy Spirit, he aids us in our minds. For what person perceives, know and understand what passes through a man's thoughts except his own spirit within him. So just so no one discerns, comes to know and comprehend the thoughts of God except the spirit of God. When the person receives Christ as a personal savior, the Holy Spirit comes and dwells in him. The Bible teaches us that the Holy Spirit knows the mind of God, just as a person's own spirit within him uh, is the only one who knows his thoughts. So the spirit of God is the only one who knows the mind. So the Spirit of God knows our mind. We know our mind. We know what we're thinking about. We know what we're allowed into our thought life. So we can't be deceived. We can't even blame on nobody else. Some things we allow ourselves to dwell on, but yet we blame the enemy. The enemy is only an agent who is to come to test, try, and prove you and, and initiate some things for you to do. But it's up to you to either receive his thought life or reject his thought life. Since the Holy Spirit dwells in us, since he knows the mind of God, one of the pur purposes is to reveal to us God's wisdom and revelation. That is a very vital point. The purpose of the Holy Spirit of God is to reveal to us the wisdom and revelation of God, who God is. The wisdom and revelation is part imparted into our spirits, and our spirits then is enlightened the eyes of our hearts, which is the mind. So once you receive a revelation, an insight by the Holy Spirit, he gives you wisdom on how to govern and to guide and to walk in the life of Christ. He gives you the insight into the mysteries of the gospel that will help enlighten you to know the tactics and the strategies of the enemy. Not only that, but to know how to defend your mind against the enemy. So the Holy Spirit does this so we can understand on a practical level, what is being ministered to us spiritually, normal or abnormal. As a believer, we are spiritual, but we are also natural. The natural does not always understand the spiritual. Therefore, it is vitally necessary for our minds to be enlightened concerning what is going on in our spirits. The Holy Spirit desires to bring us to the enlightenment, to this enlightenment, but the mind often misses what the Spirit is attempting be, to reveal because it is too busy. 
We, how many of you know people who got minds that are just so, so busy, they overthink, they just keep on trying to figure out stuff, keep on trying to reason with, reason with th why things happen in their life, why the world the way it is, why the government acts the way it does, you know, why, why this, why that, why? Your mind gets busy. You overwork your mind, God bless you. You overwork your mind to where when the Holy Spirit is trying to relate something to you, you miss it because your mind is bombarded with all the stuff of the world. The mind is normal when it's at rest, not blank, but at rest. The only way to have a normal mind is sometimes to sit down, be still, be quiet, and allow your mind to rest and dwell on the thoughts of the word of God that will produce godly thoughts inside of you. That your body, your soul, your will, your emotions, your spirit will all align with the word of God and begin to teach you and govern and guide you into the way God has ordained for your life to go. The mind should not be filled with reasonings, worries, anxieties, and fears and, and the like. It should be calm, quiet, and serene. So you got to have a calm spirit in order to have a calm mind. As we proceed into the second section of the book, we observe that several ab abnormal conditions of the mind and possibly recognize them as frequent conditions of our own mind. Amen? It is important to understand that the mind needs to be kept normal in the normal condition described in the chapter. Compare it with the unusual conditions of our minds, you will see why we frequently have little revealed to us by the Holy Spirit and why too far often we feel ourselves lacking in wisdom and revelation. So sometimes you got to sit down and begin to evaluate what thoughts am I engaging in my mind? Who am I allowed to inflict me with their thought life? Who am I allowed to bombard me with troubles and trials, the things that they're dealing with in my mind? Because people, if you're not careful, will make your dumping ground. They will come to you with all the stuff they're going through. They don't pray. They don't seek God. They're not trusting God in his word because they know you're very anointed. They know that you stay in tune with God because of a consecrated life. So they will come to you to use the gifts that God placed upon you, the anointing. They want to drain your anointing to get a place of satisfaction and comfort, but you got to recognize that spirit when it comes. One thing I learned years ago, there's a spirit behind the spirit. When the enemy comes to attack and to test and try you, he don't come all grand, uh, bodacious. He comes subtly. He'll send people that he knows that you're familiar with. He'll send people that he knows that you're acquainted with. He'll send them at the right time where he think there's a foothold in your life. And when they come, they come under as an agent of the enemy with a purpose to assassinate the wisdom, the knowledge, the understanding, the plan that God has for your life. But you got to get into the place where you recognize the importance of guarding your heart for out of the flows, the issue of life. Remember, the Holy Spirit attempts to enlighten the mind of a believer. The Holy Spirit gives information from God to the person's spirit. If the spirit and the mind are aiding one another, then he can walk in divine wisdom and revelation. Is so vital to your Christian health to walk hand in hand with the leadership of the Holy Spirit. In order to get a revelation from God, you got to get into a place where you get in your word, you meditate on that word, you feed on that word, you get that word in your spirit, and you allow the spirit of God inside of you to guide you into the plan that God has for you, the vision God has for you, the purpose God created you. And it all comes together when the mind and the spirit is working together. But if the mind is too busy, it will miss what the Lord is attempting to reveal to him through his spirit. If your mind is too busy, you worry about everything around you, worry about other people, worry about the job, 
The stuff on the job you got to do. You got to get up early in the morning. You worry about all these different things. You will allow yourself to shut out the voice of the Holy Spirit when he's talking to you. In 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 11 and 12. 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 11 and 12. It says, and he said, go forth and stand upon the mountain before the Lord. And before the Lord passed by, and a great and a strong wind rent the mountain and break in pieces rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind, and after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. We're dealing with Elijah when he hid in the cave. And after the fire, a still, small voice. God will speak to you in a still, small voice. He don't have to have a megaphone. He don't need a loud trumpet to get your attention. He don't need somebody to be on a microphone in the church to get your attention. God will speak to you specifically by his spirit with a still small voice in your conscious mind, your soul mind, and give you a rhema word. A rhema word is a specific spoken word from God for you. God will speak to you. Then it goes and says, for years I prayed for revelation, asking God to reveal to me by his spirit who lived within me. I knew the quest was scriptural. I believed the word and felt, felt, I, and felt I should be asking and receiving. Yet much of the time I felt like I was called a spiritual dunce. Then I learned that I was not receiving much of the Holy Spirit wanted to reveal to me simply because my mind was so wild and busy that it was missing the information God offered. Isn't that something? How when God is speaking to us, we get so busy, we miss the information God has for you. You might need to make a, a business decision. You might need to make a, a, a decisive decision concerning your life. <clears throat> and a lot of times, because we allow so much stuff to bombard our minds, when the Holy Spirit is trying to give you the revelation, give you the wisdom, give you the insight, to guide you into the vision that he has for your business or even for your life to make it successful, you miss it because you allow other stuff to distract you. One key point about the enemy, he loves to distract God's people. He loves to distract God's people. And what he does, he'll come into your life through other entities. It could be the television. It could be the radio. It could be a significant other. It could be a friend. It could be an associate. It doesn't matter who he uses. Long as he fulfills his purpose of distracting you. And a lot of us are vulnerable because we're not seeking God's faith for ourselves consistently. And what I mean by consistent it's a daily walk to seek the Lord. You don't need to seek the Lord sometime. You need to seek the Lord all the time. And when you get into the place in yourself where you're seeking God's face, the Holy Spirit will begin to build you up some spiritual muscles. He'll build up your defense mechanism. I love Star Trek. And every time they will come against their enemy, they'll say, put up the shields. And when the enemy strikes the ship, the shields will protect the ship from being destroyed. How many of you are putting up your spiritual defense shields against the enemy on a daily basis? You might ask the question, how do I put up a shield against the enemy? How do I defend myself against the enemy? It all goes back to the word of God. Read Ephesians chapter 6, start at verse 10 when you get a chance. Because in Ephesians chapter 6, it's going to teach you how you are to defend yourself on a daily basis against our adversary. The adversary is so cunning and so crafty and so manipulative, he don't care how he comes at you to destroy you, to kill you, and to dry you up, to drive your anointing, to take away your strength, 
to cause you to be weak and frail and to give up. He don't care what he does, but he's coming. He's looking for those who have a busy mind. <coughs> Excuse me. For those of you who have a busy mind, the enemy is looking for you. So I hope you're learning something because it's so important to recognize if I don't control my thought life by the word of God through the power of the Holy Spirit, then guess who's going to control it? Old slew foot. The adversary, the enemy, he's going to control your thought life. Imagine two people in a room together. One is trying to whisper a secret to the other. If the room is filled with a loud noise, even though the message is being communicated, with the one waiting to, for the secret information would miss is simply because the room is so noisy he can't hear. That is so true. That's a very great point. If two people are together in a noisy room and one's trying to convey a message to the other one and the room is so noisy and distracting, the message you're trying to convey to the other individual, they're not going to hear it. They may hear bits and pieces of what you're saying to them. But because of the noise, it's distracting their attention from hearing what you're trying to say. So we got to recognize how the enemy comes in subtle ways to bombard your life with noise. He bombards you with so much distraction through noise. You can be in a crowded place. You can be in a restaurant. You can be in a movie theater. Doesn't matter where you are. If it's noisy and the Holy Spirit is trying to talk to you, guess what? You're not going to hear them. So unless you are in tune and you intently listening for the voice of the Holy Spirit, you'll miss him. Unless he is paying close attention, he may not even realize that he has been spoken to. That is why with communication between God's spirit and our spirit, that's why with the communication between God's spirit and our spirit, the way the Holy Spirit, the way of the Holy Spirit are gentle. Most of the time he speaks to us as he did to the prophets in the passage and in a still small voice. It is therefore vital that we learn to keep ourselves in a condition conducive to hearing. We must keep ourselves in the right place, the right attitude to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. You got to hear it. Then what am I to do? Then what am I to do? I will pray with my spirit by the Holy Spirit that is within me. But I will also pray intelligently with my mind and understanding. This is Apostle Paul speaking. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 15. So in other words, we got to balance it out. We pray in the spirit. We pray with our, pray with our natural minds. But you got to get understanding through the power of the Holy Spirit, what you're conveying to God. Perhaps the better way to understand this principle of mind-aiding spirit is to think of prayer. In this verse, the Apostle Paul said that we pray both with his spirit and with his mind. I understand what Paul is talking about because I do the same thing. I frequently pray in the spirit in an unknown tongue. That's your prayer language. Those of you who are filled with the Holy Spirit and just baptize the Holy Spirit to speak in the prayer language. He's talking about, she's talking about this. As I pray that way for a while, often something will come to my mind to pray in English. My mind, known tongue. So by the tongue, by the spirit. I believe in this way. The mind aids the spirit. They work together to get knowledge and wisdom of God to me in the way I can understand it. So when you're praying in tongues, you're praying an unknown, unknown language where the Holy Spirit is listening to you. And you're praying in the language of the Holy Spirit to God the Father through the Son Jesus. And not only that, many times when we're praying in the Spirit, in our prayer language, the Holy Spirit will speak to you a word to pray in the natural language. And then he'll give you interpretation if there's no interpreter to, to begin to reveal to people what you just said in the Spirit. This also works in reverse. There are times when I, I want to pray, so I make myself available to God to pray. 
And if there's no particular stirring in my spirit, I should begin to pray out of my mind. So sometimes we're not filled or led by the spirit to pray in a prayer language. So we're led to pray in the natural language. And when I pray in the natural language, the Holy Spirit was stirring my spirit to begin to pray in the spirit, spiritual language. You know, it happens a lot of times as a believer, when you're baptized in the Holy Ghost and you pray in the unknown tongues, the Holy Spirit will prompt you sometimes to pray in your natural mind before you pray in the spiritual language. But you got to be sensitive to the voice of the Holy Spirit to know when the Spirit is moving you in a direction on how and what to pray for. So, let's move a little further. Tongues and interpretation. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 13 through 14. And this is all in the Amplified Version. It says, Therefore, the person who speaks in an unknown, unknown tongue or language should pray for the power to interpret and explain what he says. It's like when you're in a church and many people in a, and begin to pray in an, unknown, in an unknown language or tongues, what the word says, you need to pray that there be an interpreter. It's very important because many times we pray in tongues, if there, there's no interpreter, people don't know what you're talking about. And not only that, if you read in, in the 14th chapter, it talks about what tongues are for. It's for the unbeliever. So when you're praying in tongues, you're really praying to minister to the unbeliever that they come into a revelation of receiving Christ as Savior. So God will give you interpretation of what you spoke in the prayer language to draw them to Christ. So it's very vital to your Christian growth to begin to pray in the Spirit. It builds your spiritual muscles where you can begin to hear God's voice clearly speaking to you. So it says, for if I pray in an unknown unknown tongue, my spirit by the Holy Spirit within me prays, but my mind is unproductive. It bears no fruit and it helps nobody. Another example of the way of the spirit and the mind work together is the gift of tongues with interpretation. If you're not familiar with the gift of the Holy Spirit, I strongly encourage you to study them in the scriptures and keep an open mind to God in this area. Pray and ask him to teach you about all the supernatural gifts of the Holy Spirit and lead you to a good resources that will help you study and gain understanding. So you got to get into the word of God. If one, I said first Corinthians chapter 12 and chapter 13 and 14 are the good place to begin. So when you read chapter 12, chapter 13, chapter 14, it's going to break down what the gifts of tongues is all about and how you need to pray in the tongues. When I speak in tongues, my mind is unfruitful until God either either me or someone else uh, understand, uh, receive the understanding of what I'm saying. Then my mind becomes fruitful. So if I'm just speaking in tongues, and I don't tell you what I just said, you don't know what I'm talking about. So my mind is unfruitful because I don't have understanding of what I even said myself. Until someone comes along and says, hey, you just said this, that God is healing and delivering his people by faith. So when God gives you a revelation, it is either going to come to you with the interpretation or through some, some, somebody else with the interpretation. But you got to have an open mind to understand when the Spirit is speaking through you and to you by his Spirit. When I speak in tongues, my mind is unfruitful until God gives either me or someone else to understand that what I'm saying and my mind becomes fruitful. Please keep in mind that the gifts are not tongues and translations. Keep in mind that the gifts are not tongues and translation. Translation is an exact word for word account of the message, where, whereas in interpretation, one person gives an understanding of what the other has said. But the interpreter own style as expressed through his, through his own particular personality. So in other words, they're going to explain to you what, what just spoken in the spirit in the gift of tongues in their own way of defining what God has said to, for, to them for you or for the congregation. So you got to be in a place where you're hearing God speaking, even pray and desire for understanding, and God will give it to you. Even in your own uh, quiet time, you can spend hours praying in tongues 
And then God will give you a revelation of what you just prayed for. Because that's defining your spiritual growth when you're starting to hear God clearly, even through the gifts of tongues. And he said, even if you desire the gift of tongues, you pray for it and God will give it to you. Then here's another example. He said, let me give you an example. Sister Smith may stand up in church and give a message unknown tongue. It has come from her spirit. Neither she or anyone else knows what she has said. God may, <coughs> excuse me, God may cause me to understand what the message was, but perhaps in a general way. As I step out in faith and begin to interpret what was spoken, I make the message understandable to all, but it comes through me in my own unique way of expression. The very thing I just spoken, when God can use anybody to speak in an unknown language, and then he can have a person in the congregation that heard in the spirit what they were praying for, and God gives them the revelation, the interpretation of what the individual had just spoken. And then God, not only that, he makes it understandable so everybody in the congregation would know what just happened or what was just spoken by God. Then it goes on, it says, praying in the spirit, in the unknown tongue, and interpretation of what unknown tongue is, is a marvelous way to understand the principles of mind-aiding spirit. So that's one way to understand the mind-aiding spirit, which is the Holy Spirit himself, is when we learn how to get an understanding of speaking in tongues by the Holy Spirit, what he's talking about to us from God. The Spirit is speaking something, and the mind is given understanding. So when the Holy Spirit speaks, He's not going to leave you blindsided where you don't know what he's talking about. He's going to give you or someone near you an interpretation. Then he goes on and says, just now about this. If Sister Smith speaks an unknown tongue and God is looking for someone to give forth an interpretation, he will have to pass me by if my mind is too wild and busy to listen. Isn't that something? Even when God is speaking in tongues through an individual and there's a person in there that could interpret what God has spoken, if their mind is too wild and busy, your mind all over the place, so you won't listen. You're going to miss it. Even if he tries to interpret, tries to give an interpretation to me, I will not receive it. Why? Because my mind is too busy. If your mind is too busy, you will not receive the revelation from God. It's very important to get to the place where you hear the voice of God clearly. Clearly. You got to hear clearly what God is speaking to you by the Holy Spirit. You can't guess it. You can't think, think what well, maybe God is saying this. You need to have an assurance, a sure word of prophecy, what God has spoken by the Spirit to convey to his people to help change their lives and shape their future. Says when I was young in the Lord and learning about the spiritual gifts, I prayed almost exclusively in tongues. And so it cannot be free. Let me go back to it. Okay. I lost my spot. Give me one second. I will jump to here. Okay. After quite some time had passed, I began to feel bored with my prayer life. As I talked to the Lord about it, he let me know that I was bored because I had no idea of what I was praying about. Although I realized that I do not always have to understand what I am saying when I pray in the spirit, I have, to, I have learned that this type of prayer is out of balance and not the most fruitful if I never have any understanding. So if you pray in tongue 99%, and you're not quiet to hear God's voice to give you understanding, you're going to miss what God is saying. And, and what she's saying here is unfruitful. Because if you never get a revelation, you never get understanding. So you just be praying in tongues and praying in tongues to where it becomes to no avail. So God wants us to get to the place, if you're going to pray in tongues, not only pray in tongues, but pray for an understanding. Many times when I pray in tongues in church or at home among myself, I pray as the Lord, what is it? And many times when God will lead me to a scripture in the Bible 
and he'll tell me, this is what I'll say to you. And when I read that scripture, then I get a revelation. Okay, God, now I can talk about this in church because now you just gave me a word. And even when I'm preparing to preach a sermon, I pray in tongues. I labor before God until I get, get a sure word from the Lord of what he's saying to me. And then I go to the scriptures, begin to meditate on the scriptures, begin to pray about the scripture. And then when God gives me revelation, now I can preach the message in the church. A lot of preachers, I've known this through years, a lot of preachers preach from their intellect. They don't have no revelation. They don't get in the word. They preach from their thoughts, from what they studied throughout the years. They're not praying for new revelation. They're going off some old milk. And what I mean by old milk, some old revelation. You as a believer, as a man of God, woman of God, whoever is called to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ, it's very vital for you to spend time in the presence of the Lord until you get a revelation, a fresh rhema word from God, that word that will help change somebody's life. You never know who might be in a place where you are contemplating suicide or contemplating murdering somebody or destroying somebody's property. The enemy comes in many different ways to attack the mind of many individuals who are not strong enough to rebel against him. We need to rise up as a people of the Lord and rebel against the enemy, stand against the enemy, resist the enemy, resist them steadfast in the faith. Then God says, he said, resist the enemy, then he'll flee from you. But you got to submit to God first. If you can't, cannot submit to God, how do you expect to defeat your adversary? Think about it. You cannot defeat an enemy if you haven't submitted to God. When you submit to God, God gives you the willing and the power and the know-how to overcome your enemy. Until you get into a place of consecration, you're never going to hear the sure word of prophecy that God wants to speak to you, not through somebody else, not through your mama, not through your daddy, not through your brother, not through your pastor, not through your sisters. God wants to speak to you and give you a word that will help change your mind. The mind that we have is so frugal. We have to learn how to cultivate our minds with the word of God and allow the word of God through the power of the Holy Spirit to pull up those weeds and dandelions. The enemy plants things in your mind at nighttime while you're sleeping. And when you wake up in the morning, you got to get to the place where, Lord, I surrender my mind to you, my will, my emotions, that today, God, you will be the orchestrator of my thoughts. When you get to the place and you tell God, I give you charge over my thoughts today, guess what happens? He takes control. The enemy is defeated from that moment you shut him out. He cannot come in unless you give him access. So many times my pastor talks about sealing the breach. We allow breaches through other people, other avenues to get into our mindsets. So when God is trying to show you, hey, get in the spirit, get in the prayer, get, start using your prayer language, start seeking my faith, start trusting me at my word. We, we find our favorite television show. We find our favorite music to listen to. We find our favorite places to go. So we shut out God's voice because I want to appease my flesh. Many times I've done that. When God was wooing me to get in the Bible and to pray and to seek his faith, there was something on the television or someplace I wanted to go that seemed to be more important than spending time with God. But when I begin to mature, hear what I'm saying. He that is immature is one that lacks spiritual growth in the word of the Bible calls it unskilled. And he's a babe seeking, he said, a babe that's designed to sincere milk of the word. In other words, you ain't ready to grow up. We got to get to the place where we let the Holy Spirit convict us, try us, change us, perfect us, build us, that we get the character of the Holy Spirit on the inside that will lead you in the way that Christ walked before you as a living example. 
a living epistle of the gospel. And when you know without a shadow of a doubt, nothing the enemy brings your way can stop you. It is very important to get in the word of God. Peaceful, alert mind. You would guard him and keep him in perfect and constant peace whose mind, both his in inclination and his character is stayed on you because he commits himself to you, leans on and hopes confidently in you. Very important point. God could only guard, God could only perfect, God can only keep you in peace in your mind when your inclination and your character lines up with the Holy Spirit and begins to pattern after Christ Jesus and stay on him. When you commit yourself and you lean on Christ's ability, his strength, his power, and you hope confidently in him, God said, I will keep you secure in your mind. Very important point. Allow the Holy Spirit to keep you consecrated, submitted, and stabilize your mind in Christ Jesus. It's very important. If you don't allow the Spirit of God to control your mind, Isaiah 26, chapter, verse 3. Isaiah 26, chapter, verse 3. If you don't allow the Holy Spirit to lead you and to guide you and direct you in the way God has ordained for you to go, your mind is going to be a wreck. That's why so many people are in the mental institutions because they allow the enemy to bombard their mind with the cares of the world. When you read the story of the sword, he says, when the thief comes, the word that has been sown into people's lives that was on good, that was on the surface, he said, thief came and stole that word. Why? Because they were so, so concerned about the things of the world. You got to get to the place where the world doesn't matter anymore. What God does in my life values me the most and what I should value in him the most. God values us as his prized possession, a chosen treasure, and we need to reciprocate to God the same type of attitude, the same type of character, and allow ourselves to be lined up with God's word to we, we value God over everything else over your husband, over your wife, over your children, over your job, over your possessions. You got to allow the Holy Spirit to cause you to value God higher than anything in this world. Very important. If you don't allow the Holy Spirit to lead, to guide, and govern you, you're going to miss the mark. You're going to always have that breach in your mindset where the enemy have access in and out, in and out. And he's going to keep on coming in and out. He's going to keep on causing you to worry. He's going to keep on causing you to feel sick. He's going to keep on causing you anxiety. He's going to keep on causing you trouble. Why? Because you ain't shut the breach. So I hope you're learning something tonight how important it is to allow the Holy Spirit to shut the breach to the enemy in your mind. It doesn't matter what you've been through. That's gone. The hurts, the pains, the brokenness, the broken relationships, the, the things people have done to you, how they may have damaged you for a season. God says for me to tell you tonight, this is a reaping season. This is your season to regain everything the enemy has stolen from you by the power of the Holy Spirit. And the way you're going to receive what God has for you is when you allow God to get into your mindset to control your thought life, to allow the Holy Spirit to begin to feed you with the nourishment of the Word of God to begin to purge the brokenness of your heart out of you. God takes the broken pieces like he did with the potter's wheel. He said the, pot, the clay was marred in the potter's hand. And then the potter, Jeremiah 17 chapter, read that chapter, get your hand. Jeremiah 17 chapter. So he took the clay and he remolded it to his own satisfaction. God does the same thing with you. He knows you've been hurt. He knows you've been through some disappointments. He knows you've been through some discouraging points in your life. But he says, you know what? I'm not going to let that destroy you. Matter of fact, I'm going to take the damaging things that they've done to you. I'm going to use it to build character. Not only build character, I'm going to build your identity. Why? Because I'm going to change your identity. Once what's broken 
is now healed and delivered. So I'm going to give you a new name called Jesus. And that name Jesus, hallelujah, goes beyond the brokenness, go beyond the mess ups in my life, go beyond what people have done to hurt me, go beyond about the slander and backbiting, all this stuff. Why? Because he cares so much about me to build me back up that I can be a vessel that's to display his glory through. You are created to display God's glory. You, you who looking on here tonight, you are created to display God's glory. And God says, when you allow yourself to get out the way, he will lead the way. Not only will he lead the way, he'll lead you to that promised land that you've been expecting God to bring you. He'll lead you to that financial favor and increase. He'll lead you to that better job. He'll lead you to that house you're looking for. He said, when you get out the way, I'm going to lead you to pastures green. That's what it says in Psalm 23. He said, a shepherd leads to pastures green. So in other words, satisfaction is a guarantee for a believer. Doesn't matter what you're expecting God to do, keep on expecting it. Every day I wake up with an expectation. I even lost my Bluetooth today. I said, Lord, I said, what is this? And I questioned myself. And I knew it was the voice of the enemy speaking to me. He says, he says, boy, it must be your season of losing. You lost your phone on Saturday. You lost the other phone and somebody else found it. Then he said, then you lost your Bluetooth. I said, you know what, devil? I may be losing things, but God has greater for me to gain. So everything I lose, I still win. Fantasia said, sometimes you lose just to win again. So when you get to the mindset of our understanding, that's what we're talking about tonight, is having an understanding that when God allows things to be torn from you, it's a reason he's using those things to perfect you. To see where's your loyalty. To see where your dependency. Are you trusting God in his word? Or are you standing against God? Are you opposing God? So as we get ready to come to a close, and we're going to pick this back up next week. I know I talked this lesson before, but I felt it in spirit to go back over it again. Because it's very important as a believer to get an understanding, even when things are not going right in your life. Ask God, God, why did this happen? What's going on over here? What, what's happening here? But you know what? I got a better phone than what I lost. I said, my, my fiance said to me the other day, she said, you know what? You may have lost your phone, but God has greater for you. He has something better. And guess what? I got a Note 20, uh, 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 the new one, the, the Note 20 uh, 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 Ultra 5, 5G. So the new phone. Why? Because I trusted God in his word. Even in losing, I didn't let it destroy my character. I didn't let it get me out of character. I didn't let it get me angry. I didn't let it make me bitter. I didn't make, let it make me frustrating. Why? Because those things are materials. The greatest value on my life right now is God. Anything I need, the word says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. So I pray that tonight you understand it and that you get a revelation of everything we talked about tonight and allow the Holy Spirit to begin to get into your heart to draw your attention. Don't let the television draw your attention. Let God draw your attention. Don't let people draw your attention. Don't let music draw your attention. Let God draw your attention. Because when God draws your attention, he begins to dump things into you that's going to build you up. Not only that, he will release the blessings over your life that you don't have enough room to receive. I'm glad to see my pastor on tonight and Mother Denise, Pastor Denise, God bless you. Shonda, many, many of you have joined tonight. God bless you. Maurice, 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 Maurice God bless you. I, I thank the Lord for everyone who tuned in tonight. I, I pray that this has really been inspiration to you to encourage you. Don't allow the enemy to bring discouragement. And if discouragement comes knocking at your door, return the sender. Tell it, I'm not receiving this today. I've been discouraged. I've been frustrated. I've been bitter. I've been miserable long enough. The cycle is broken today. 
the cycle that I used to give in to, I'm not receiving no more after the day. Because now I'm allowing the Holy Spirit to change my mindset. To begin to give me the mind of the Spirit. To know the heart of God. That I can live by the principles of God's Word. And apply it to my heart and my life. In Jesus name. So Lord I thank you tonight for your Word. Thank you for the opportunity God you've given me to teach your Word tonight. I pray Lord God that you change all of our mindsets. Change our attitudes. Change the words we allow to come out of our mouth, oh God. That fear, doubt, and unbelief, the negative stuff we gave into, oh God, allow to come out of us. Tonight, God, we bind that spirit of negativity, unfruitfulness, the wayward mindset. We bind it in Jesus' name. Father, every brokenness, Father, every a messed up relationship, every broken marriage, Father God, we bind it up in the name of Jesus. Father, all the problems that bombarded our minds from other people, even for ourselves. We send it back tonight to the pit of hell where it come from. And we lose the anointing to sanctify our minds and our hearts by the Holy Spirit. And begin to build us up as vessels of light to no longer give into the darkness. And I thank you that we shall be fruitful because the cycle is being broken in the name of Jesus right now. By the power of the blood of the Lamb and the word of God in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I want you to pray this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I come, Lord God, right now, asking you to forgive me for my sins, knowingly and unknowingly. Come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior and fill with the Holy Spirit and with power to be a witness for you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, welcome to the family of God. God bless you tonight. Stay excited about Jesus. If you want to sow a donation to the ministry, feel free to do so. Each week I post the uh, information whenever my computer decides to act right. But I just pray that it really that you've been blessed tonight by the power of the Holy Spirit to keep on doing what God called you to do. Keep on declaring his word. Allow God to strengthen, to empower, to settle you, to encourage you to keep going on in the name of the Lord. Don't allow the enemy to paralyze you by fear. Don't allow the enemy to stop you in your tracks, but allow the Holy Spirit to break his stronghold off of you through the word of God in the name of Jesus. Be blessed and stay excited. Until next week, shalom. May the peace of God abide in your hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a good night.